So today we're going to talk about oxidation, okay? A very exciting topic. Originally, this meant adding oxygen to a compound and the losing of an electron, okay? When you lose an electron from, from an atom, you create a free radical. So these atoms have paired electrons. As an example, you have this plate and you're spinning it, right, on your finger, and it has two weights on it, and you can balance that plate as you spin it, okay? But a free radical is when you remove an electron and you have what's called an unpaired electron. So it just has one weight on a plate and you're spinning this thing. Well, guess what? It's gonna fly off and break something. Well, in the body, it's gonna start damaging tissue, DNA, et cetera. So that's the problem with free radicals, okay? And it can come from adding an oxygen um, to some other compound. Now, the definition has expanded to the creation of free radicals without the oxygen. Another example would be biting into an apple. If you leave it exposed to oxygen, it's gonna turn brown, right? But if you add an antioxidant like lemon, it doesn't turn brown. So what an antioxidant does is it donates an electron to make things more symmetrical and stabilize this atom. And antioxidants always come in a group or a network in the food. This is why when an antioxidant donates, it becomes now unstable and it needs to borrow from another antioxidant. And this is why you need a network of antioxidants. So let me give you some examples of an oxidant. The top oxidizer is glucose, okay? So what's gonna happen if you have high sugar in your blood, your body's gonna metabolize that. It's gonna create a massive amount of oxidation, okay? It's called ROS, okay? You don't need to know the long term, but you just need to know this is oxidation on steroids. So you have all this oxidation, all this free radical damage from consuming a lot of glucose. Now it's interesting, when you consume antioxidants, um, and a lot of different nutrients act as an antioxidant, like zinc, selenium, even though they're minerals, they're not like vitamin C, for example, they act like an antioxidant. And then you have vitamin E, vitamin C, even vitamin D, and even ketones can all act as an antioxidant to reduce the complications of diabetes, for example. And that's what it's really doing. It's minimizing the damage control. But glucose is at the top of the list. Next one, vegetable oils, highly unstable. They're always cooked to stabilize them, but typically they're an omega-6 fatty acid that becomes very unstable. I'm gonna talk more about this in a second. And then we have iron. Think about when you have like rust. If you combine oxygen with iron, you get rust. So iron in very high amounts in your body is very, very uh, dangerous because it's gonna create a lot of oxidation. So a deficiency of iron is very, very dangerous, but an excess is also very dangerous. Pollution in the environment, chemicals in the environment, and just having low antioxidants because you don't like vegetables, okay? That can actually create an imbalance. So when you have too much oxidation versus antioxidants, that's called oxidative stress, okay? Because it's not in balance. Now let's come back to this uh, vegetable oil, which is really not even vegetable oil, it's seed oil. Um, mostly GMO, we're talking about soy, corn, cotton seed, and canola. These are the four GMO um, vegetable oils that you see in the grocery store in so many of your products. Highly processed, it has trace uh, amounts of glyphosate, which is an herbicide, and it can create this thing called advanced lipid oxidation end products. So it creates um, more free radicals, it creates inflammation in the body, and it depletes the antioxidants. So it depletes you of vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, and that's one of the big problems. When people go to restaurants or they go to fast food uh, restaurants, um, they're using these oils and they keep reheating it over and over and over. And they might reuse this for a week or two weeks. And it all ends up as this dark, highly processed, highly oxidized grease in a grease pit. And there are certain companies that come along and will take this restaurant grease because you can't put it into the sewage and they will take it back to the plant and they will recycle it, okay? And guess where they put it back into? Animal feeds. I printed this off uh, one of the websites on one of the companies. I just, there's a couple little quotes here that's quite interesting. Vegetable oils are produced from the freshest recycled raw material 
Freshest? Really? And stabilized with ethoxyquin for maximum shelf life. Now, what is ethoxyquin? Ethoxyquin was developed by, take a while to guess, Monsanto in the 50s. Ethoxyquin was initially registered as a pesticide, then in 1965, reclassified as an antioxidant. Interesting. Ethoxyquin is allowed in the fish industry in Norway as a feed stabilizer. So is commonly used in food pellets fed to farm salmon. Not wild caught, by the way. Ethoxyquin is used in pellets to feed chickens on chicken farms. In 2017, the European Union suspended authorization for use as a feed additive. Of course, in America, we still use it. Welcome to America. The agency, and I'm talking about the agency in Europe, found one of its metabolites to be genotoxic. That means toxic to your genes and mutagenic. That means it can generate mutations. So this is just another reason why to do keto healthily, okay? For, you, for those of you that are new, I put a link down below. But if you're going to a restaurant, realize you might be getting some of these oils. All right, thanks. For hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.